Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. So this is the first flight after the new firmware update that covers the battery, the smart controller support and the uh, FPV mode, the new smooth FPV mode of adjustments and the adjustments to the compass calibration as well. Now let's take a quick look through the menus in just to see if anything has changed. So obviously all our safety features are still there, auto return to home altitude, 100 meters, uh, compass is normal, IMU is normal, um, Aeroscope, we already know what that is, find my drone battery info, advanced safety settings, um, nothing has changed there. So let's go back in and go to our control, and again, nothing has really changed there. I just want to select that to solid, and then, oh, solid, and then blue, there we go. Um, let's stick for follow mode for now, allow upward gimbal rotation, yep, that's the same, advanced gimbal settings. Again, everything is the same. Uh, what else do we have? Stick mode, mode 2, cu button customization, any additional settings? Nope, absolutely nothing, that's all the same. But of course we can use the AE unlock and lock, however it doesn't actually do anything on Android. In the camera, again, everything looks to be exactly the same. Uh, from what I can see anyway, let's click that one on, so I like to have that one on. White balance manual, yep, everything is okay there. Transmission, always leave this in dual band, guys, because that's what you want. And let's click in the about, and we've got aircraft firmware 1030000. Okay, okay, so let's go ahead and see if there's any additional settings here, or any additional options. Nope, absolutely nothing. 2.7K, all the usual ones and 1080p again all the usual options okay then zoom nothing adjustment there we should still have four times zoom at 1080p there we go really good quality but as you know on this channel i do everything in 4k so let's go ahead and check our compass then see if it's accurate which it seems to be let's go ahead and start a recording then and then I think it's time to take off. Take off. The home point has been updated. So Please check it on the map. map. And let's go for a little flight out and just test some of the signal. Right, so as you can see, we're taking a little flight out, getting up to that 400 meters. And then everything seems nice and smooth and stable. Pretty much turning on the spot. And we've got a little bit of a jump and lag, and we've got a bit of a gimbal tilt there. Um, that was a strange one because there is absolutely no wind whatsoever at the minute um, or maybe a little bit as you can see the attitude in the corner so let's head back then and then let's enter a sort of higher interference area and just see how well it does love the sound of the drones just screaming across the sky when it's so so quiet Right, so what I want to do is I want to lose a little bit of altitude, about 25 meters. As you can see, there's some uh, kayakers there. Very nice. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pop that back into normal and then go for a flight out. Just test the signal in this high interference area. Now I have flown in this area plenty of times before, and as you can see, using the compass in the bottom, I'm just adjusting my body to make sure I'm perfectly within the line of sight of the drone. There was a little bit of a signal drop there, a little bit of a jump. So as you can see, we are getting that weak signal warning, which isn't great. Let's just check our interference in the transmission. And there's not much interference there at all, so that's quite unexpected. And like I say, I have flown this area before and never really had a problem. So let's gain a little bit more height. Our RC is still red, we're getting that weak signal just antennas. But if you look at the bottom corner, I am facing the drone perfectly. So that's quite a strange one. Another interference message, and we're really losing signal here. So let's try and get some height and regain our signal. Oh, and then we've got an RC signal lost, and now it's back. Oh, it's struggling a little bit here. 
try and get some height. But yeah, that's not that's not brilliant to be perfectly honest. Um, like I said, I've flown in this area plenty of times. Let's just check our rocket sync. And again, we've switched to a 5.8 gigahertz band or 2.4 now, but there's very little interference, so that's quite unexpected. Now I have heard from one of you guys um, in the comment section that the basically DJI have possibly limited this drone in terms of distance. I wonder if they've done that using some sort of uh, signal power or anything like that. Didn't say there was an update to the controller, but this seems a bit strange. I'm having to get that little bit more height to keep ourselves uh, with a strong signal. That was a little disappointing. I'll put it out on this video, but I wouldn't expect it's going to be a major problem unless, of course, you guys start telling me that you're having problems as well. So one thing to mention is where I took off from I'm actually sat on a big slab of concrete uh, which is for mooring boats actually and I never got any compass calibration message and to be perfectly honest I normally do when I'm in here so maybe that update on the uh, firmware has caused that to uh, be a lot better so hopefully that has. So what I'm going to do I'm just going to switch out of here and go back into safety and control because I'm clicking the wrong one and then let's try and out the FPV mode so apparently this is updated I'm not entirely sure what they have updated let's go for a little flight anyway to make it more interesting let's pop it into sport mode so let's go for a little flight out then and a little spin round with a little bit of a gimbal drop all on its own that's not me doing that that is the drone staying clear of those power lines and of course, because we are in sport mode, I can't lift that gimbal any more than, what, minus 17? And then pretty much facing the drone. Let's get a bit more height. And again, a little bit of a signal drop there. Gimbal seems to be quite stable when exiting FPV mode. Let's do a, a tight bank. Let's smooth that off. And again, that little bit of a, a lag when leaving the uh, sharp bank. So overall, good fun. But uh, I'm not entirely sure what they might have changed. Um, because like I said, the FPV mode was pretty good on the Mini 2 anyway. So as you saw there, there was a little bit of lag. But using the compass, you can see I'm pointing the controller at the drone at all times. So again, you know, I'm just reporting these findings. Maybe they're a one-off, maybe not. So let's stick to uh, normal mode and see if we get it's a little bit smoother. Yeah, so it's sport mode, isn't it? When in normal mode, it's quite a lot smoother, which is nice. Right then, so I think that's time to end the video. Obviously, I'm just reporting my findings and what I found so far is the FPV mode is really, really smooth. I didn't get any compass uh, calibration issues where I normally do in this location. However, I have had quite a bit more lag and latency. Again, you guys just let me know what you find as well. So thank you very much for watching. It's time to land and end the video and see you again soon.